So, welcome. <laughs> uh, does everybody has the ID installed or the preferred method? No, just the uh, GitHub profile. What's the ID? The ID, uh, what do you have? Uh, OSX. OSX. Uh, there's a link. Mm. Yes, uh, but if you just, you can type download Coke ID and this has a list of package. Is <clears throat> that's so much pressure for me. I don't know. People actually show for this. <laughs> So my idea was is to mix, uh, do some kind of basic presentation, uh, try to do some exercises. Maybe we can, we can do something small together and then try on your own. Uh, but I will be alternating between uh, some some presentation and uh, doing some exercises to keep it uh, interesting. Uh, so let's start then. Uh, first, welcome. My name is Gabriel Claremont. Uh, first, I'm not an expert. I took a, like a one semester of this uh, a couple of years ago in the university, and it was really interesting. Um, I, I feel like it's an area that is not yet, uh, I don't know, popular. Or I, I, I wanted to make this uh, like more uh, known around. Because they has very interesting ideas, uh, and there's a whole new crop of dependently type functional programs that uh, functional languages that kind of they're based on the same ideas, and so the idea is just know this a little better, try some some proofs, some weird programs, and see what what it goes. Um, but also the kind of the format is very open. If if you have questions, you have you want to try things, just let me know. We can try it together. Uh, first, uh, how many of you have, have you heard about Coke? Cool. Do you have uh, have you tried? Have you tried? Do you have uh, some experience on that? <laughs> That's a good one. And you didn't run away? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, the first question is, what is Coq? Um, on, the, on the hierarchy of stuff, Coq is like a, is a theorem prover. You can use to prove theorems. But also, um, is, is had, has embedded a programming language, a very powerful programming language, working at uh, it's kind of a low-level logic that is really powerful, um, but the, in the whole world, this this is inside the area of formal methods. Uh, inside that is programming logics because it's logic. Uh, that is a type, type theory programming logic. Uh, this is a proof assistant. It's not an automatic uh, automatic proof uh, prover because it assists you to prove the, the, the goal. It's not like it searches automatically for every goal. Uh, there's, there's some things called tactics that helps you, and there have some, some that can create a, a proof automatically, but it's not the main usage. So th that's why it's a proof assistant. <coughs> so it's, in, in part, it's a, a formal language, for uh, program specification in type theory. It's a way to reason and, and create proof of that specification and uh, assist you in creating those proofs. It's in the same code you can uh, write uh, your program and then prove things about that program. And it's, uh, the, it's, uh, the theory is called the calculus of constructions. And that's what the name is. A, play of words between the, the calculus of constructions and the last name of the guy has the Rico Kwan. In turn, that uh, is 
calculus of, of construction is uh, like a variation of the lambda calculus, uh, the, the, the strongly typed the, uh, lambda calculus. Uh, and this is based also on the Martin Lov integristic type theory. Uh, that is like a, a constructive uh, logic in the sense of uh, for every proposition, you have to show a proof of that proposition. Uh, they say in opposition of the classical logic that you have the law of the excluded middle. Here you don't have the, the excluded middle. If you want to say this is true, it doesn't. You, you actually need to create a proof, a proof that that is true. You cannot use the fact that the, op the opposite is false because it's not valid. So the first thing I wanted to show that is kind of easier and and more usable is using Coq as a, a, a proof assistant. So later we're going to see the the programming language, but first uh, we, you can see Coq as like a DSL for making proofs. And as I said before, this is based on the is a constructive logic. You have to build proofs for everything you want to create. And kind of the notation for the proof construction is you have uh, it's like I don't know the, the ruler when you see in the like uh, type theory textbooks or whatever. You have the, the hypothesis on the top and and the context. Basically, it's called also the context. And uh, below it, the goal you want to prove. You can have one, or actually you have multiple hypotheses you want to prove multiple goals. And to transform that, <coughs> we use what's called in Coq tactics. <coughs> to, just because this is the use by mathematicians and they don't like long names, we're going to use, uh, I think this is uh, capital lambda, right? Uh, gamma, yeah. And as the gamma as the hypothesis and alpha as the goal. And the idea of tactic is a transformation uh, the, from uh, one set of hypotheses and goals to uh, a, a set of hypotheses and goals that are enough to to prove the, the original goal. Um, this is really generic. <coughs> But uh, by working in Coq, you have a, a the viable tactics. And uh, the idea is to show first the the simple tactics for propositional logic. And this is the most simple thing you can do. You want to prove something that you already you already know. And basically, you tell Coq that assumption means that you, you say assumption means your goal is in the hypothesis. What, I want, what I'm going to is through the, the basic tool set to, to make those proofs. The next uh, tag is called introduction that takes the, the implication and from the if your goal is an implication, basically move the first part to the hypothesis. And that's called the introduction. <coughs> and if we have, depends on what we have, we have kind of different types of introduction. If we have a, this is a disjunction, you can either introduce the, the left side or the right side. That's reasonable. If you want to prove alpha or beta, you can either prove alpha or prove, or prove beta. If you want to prove the, the intersection, uh, the disjunction, uh, you have to prove both sides. If you have a, if you have, if you have alpha and beta, you have to prove alpha and beta, and that is the, the tactic is called split. And that kind of uh, I call this introductions because it's still like introductions. And this kind of kind of introduction kind of uh, of bottom. If you want to prove false, basically you 
you want to prove uh, some alpha and the negation of that. And that's done with the tactic absorb. How do you pronounce this junction? Ah, I'm really not really sure because I did this course in Spanish, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a yeah. But this is this is the equivalent of or and and. Uh, this is the the or and this is the and. Um, somebody remember how this is called? How this is called the the. Um, yeah, I think that yeah. The and is a the exception, and the the or is a. Union. Uh, those are the introductions. Now uh, we want to go kind of the opposite way, and it's the elimination. If we have in the hypothesis something like uh, implication, uh, if you have I uh, alpha implies beta, and uh, we want to prove beta. We apply the, the hypothesis, and basically now we have only proved alpha, because by hypothesis uh, we have beta. Then, and this can generalize to like multiple, uh, like a long chain of implications. Basically, what I get is if I have a, uh, a chain, I, ha I have to prove e every one of the elements of that implication chain. <clears throat> That's the, like uh, the general, general elim elimination for the implication, and the elimination for the uh, union, the disjunction, and the, un the union and the disjunction uh, is again, if you think about it, um, if you have to prove uh, that alpha or beta, uh, and your goal is G, you, it generates two different goals, one to prove that with alpha implies G and beta implies G. If you have the, the disjunction, you apply the elimination, basically you want, now you have to prove that alpha implies beta implies the goal. Why do you have to imply that, why do you have to prove that alpha implies beta if the hypothesis says that no, the, the, the hypothesis uh, here. Here, the hypothesis says that uh, you have alpha and beta. Yeah. And but what you're doing here is kind of uh, el eliminating hypothesis. Try to move from the hypothesis to here. It's like. Uh, Kind of the previous uh, here in the in the application, uh, you move from the beta, you try to work backwards. So that's uh, actually I think here the the order doesn't really matter. But basically, if you have A and B, you can say that uh, A implies B and B implies A. Uh, uh, there's other things that can be proved also. Yeah, probably like that. You can see that, like. Um, not here, and probably there is some details about that. Why the implication? But either you can prove it. I think one of the exercises. Yeah, of the of the AR. If you have a dissection uh, B. You can prove that you have also B, that implies beta this uh, dissension A, and the, the reason I think is if 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 because we are in a constructive logic, if we have false anywhere in the hypothesis, we can prove anything we want. Once you have false in any hypothesis, uh, anything's become possible. <laughs> There is a couple of other tactics that one is this one cut is used for basically reordering and managing long proofs. Uh, you kind of cut in the middle uh, 
of your proof. Uh, you want you are in the middle. We are trying to prove alpha from some big context, uh, but you know you, you know that you know an intermediate step step, or you know that it's easier to create. So you kind of cut in the intermediate step, and you can prove that uh, separately, and then <coughs> use that to prove alpha. It's more like a reorganization thing. <coughs> And the one, the last one is a way to um, to, the, to to say that you have the exact proof of uh, what you're looking for. Uh, T can be T is in the con basically also is when you have uh, T as another theorem, or is it already in the context? And you say exact T, and it says proof. Yeah, basically you say, okay, I want to, uh, to, yeah, to introduce, uh, I want to cut in the middle. Uh, I want to put a set saying, yeah, uh, if I have a B, I can prove A, uh, but then you have to prove B. Mm. Among other things we have, this is just a lot of kind of, lot of stuff. Um, if you want, want to prove the proving the the not the negation is uh, you have to prove basically, basically the, the is a re expanding the syntactic sugar. Uh, this is not uh, not alpha. That means alpha implies fail, false. And this again, the, you have the double implication as a, like a symbol, and when you fold it, basically it expands to the definition. A in place B and B in place A. <coughs> and you can also unfold in the hypothesis, not in the goal, but you can say unfold name of the hypothesis, uh, name of the operator in the hypothesis. Uh, if you want, you can work on classical logic. I mean, uh, this is, I'm just going through the, the surface. Uh, but it has a lot of uh, uh, tactics, uh, libraries to work in different areas. Uh, you can import classical logic and work uh, with classical logic. Basically, import that as an axiom, but that changes because uh, with classical logic you have uh, uh, more problems. Um, and there is a this a tactic that basically uh, creates your proof uh, if if there is a if it can it works through the the your goals trying what is called like constructive tautologies and trying to generate automatically a proof. Uh, sometimes it can, sometimes it doesn't, but it's kind of automatic. So yeah, let's 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 start doing something simple things. This is how the the cog IDE looks like. Um, this uh, yeah. Mm. Give me a second. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if that would work, but not here. But uh, let me make the font of this bigger. Oh. 
Oh. Too much? Yeah. Because then uh, we will not see much of the other thing. Let me find an intermediate in that. Hmm. What do you think? Good enough? Okay. So, uh, th this is the, the first template that is in the GitHub repository if you want to download and, and try it. Uh, but the, the first things we want to, I want to, do, to show is like, let's prove the, the basic, uh, basic uh, combinator of the SKI logic. We have the constant. Uh, the identity constant and S, I forgot the name of S. Does somebody remember what S? Yeah, exactly. It's for yeah. Um? It's for ah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, it's, it's a, the, 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 like the, the combinator of, um, I forgot the names, but the SKI calculus. That's also, I think, it's equivalent of lambda calculus, if I recall correctly. But you, we can try uh, to prove these things. And the idea is to use, the, basically, the, the tactics we, we saw, like intros, application, assumption, uh, split, left, right, absurd, elimination. Um, first, this is divided in sections. You can divide sections um, and declare, declare kind of, you, you ca there are kind of modules. You can declare things inside the sections that are only applied for that section. And here what I'm declaring is um, three variables, A, B, C, that are prop, that are proposition. Uh, let me try to get that right. Cog, um, variables in Cog can be, uh, well, they are kind of, uh, the specific name that is called sorts. And here the sorts are, Propositions, sets, and types. Propositions are the basically the the logic side. The propositions we want to use in, in proofs. Sets are the the what we in a pro programming language we will, you will call type. That is here is sets, basically uh, sets of things. And types are the higher higher kind uh, types that we use in our programming languages. Uh, just uh, keep a healthy distract of everything I say, <laughs> because this is, uh, uh, they have uh, like a very specific things and there is uh, a lot of theory behind and I'm probably going to mix up some things. <laughs> so here, um, the all these uh, descriptions here are uh, Cog has a kind of two languages. One is called Gallina, that is Cog in Spanish, basically. Uh, it's chicken in Spanish. Uh, what is uh, it has uh, the actual uh, calculus of construction programming language, and uh, there's another set of. Um, this is syntaxis is called vernacular. That is the one who we use to define all this kind of accessory stuff. Um, so uh, let's try our first proof. So uh, we start saying proof. Every, everything, every every line here in Cox ends with a dot. So there's one thing I got right here, but. Uh, to tell Cog to evaluate that, we, we, we need to advance to that line in the Cog ID 401. Basically, you, we will see here how Cog is evaluating. Let me go back. Uh, we define the section. Here we define the three variables, and we get like here, okay, A, B, and C is declared. Okay. Now we get the, the first theorem, A implies, implies A. So here we, is the, the, in the top is the current status. 
it have, we have one sub goal that is A implies A, and we have these three propositions A, B, C in our context. You have to hit here, uh, forward one command, this down arrow. Uh, there is usually control, I think cont control, alt, uh, control down or alt shift down, but in, in, in Linux it get, it's mapped to the switch screen, so. <laughs> Actually here in navigation you can see the, the shortcut. Um, Control down. Yeah, proof. Come on. Yeah. It's Basically, it shows when you evaluate the theorem A in place A. Okay, so we go to describe or proof. Who has any idea of based on what we already saw? To prove this. You have to prove I in place A. It's mm -hmm. uh, elimination. Actually, what we want is we have uh, basically all, all Cox, uh, all proof in Cox start the same, but if, if, what I'm saying is here, if we move A to the to the hypothesis, uh, kind of we already have it. Uh, and if we s if if we go back to the presentation, we are uh, here. It looks like this. We, in this case, we have alpha implies alpha, and basically we want to use introduction to move uh, alpha up uh, because no uh, introduction means uh, all the implications you have basically is you can think of instead of having to prove the, the whole implication basically say okay if you can prove the the previous part basically you have you you only have to the only goal is the last part of the implication. You kind of move everything to the hypothesis. Is something you do if you're not, you're not sure, just to try an idea? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of like uh, solving a puzzle, like trying things, especially if you really don't know what you're doing like me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, the first part is uh, always almost introduction. We can uh, draw... In, we can give a name, we can say hypothesis A. Uh, basically what I did is, okay, I uh, introduced the left side of the application as a hypothesis. And in this case we have only one. If, if you want to change your, your current evaluation, you can go up and Edit. You can don't give a name. Cog will assign a name. And there's another intros we're going to see later, but basically introduce everything. But let's do it uh, with names. We have a hypothesis of A. And now we have A is our goal. A is in our hypothesis. One. What's next? Yeah. 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 Basically, it starts the uh, interactive start thing. It's kind of a start of a block, but a proof block. Uh, yeah, it looks like, yeah. Okay. So, how can I run it? Uh, you click here. Show it out, so. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh, it's still there. Yeah, it's okay. still there. But if you go navigation, okay. it will tell you here the shortcut is uh, control down. It's the same thing. Okay, what, what, what's next? Yeah, I mean, we are in a situation that what we want to prove is already in the... We can use... Uh, sometimes you have two options that it has the same. You can, we can use exact H1, HA, basically. Sorry, exact, and that will work. Uh, but uh, because you already have any hypothesis, exact, exact is usually when you have another theorem uh, and you want to use it, you use exact and use that theorem. It works on the hypothesis too. Um, yes. No, 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 you, you have to type it. Every, send, okay, every line okay, ends with a dot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In, uh, we will see later. In this case, that is no difference because you have only one implication. But we, we, when you have more than one, intro will we'll take the first one, and intros will do all. Assumption. Yes. Okay. Uh, once we have assumption, because what we have in the in the goal is the same that we have in the policies, we can say assumption, and Cog will tell us no more sub goals to prove. So we can finish the theorem with QED, and that's our first. Uh, it's also that uh, what you want to prove is already in the hypothesis. Obviously, Cog validates that. <laughs> I mean, if I do here, assumption, it's a, uh, <laughs> no, you're not. You don't have that. You can't do that. Want to take a couple of minutes to do the second one? of work backwards from the goal, transforming steps till you get the initial hypothesis. If you want, yes. If you don't want, yeah, depends. Yeah. <coughs> 
Tá? Ah, uh, syntax reference. Um, my syntax is. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not. Got the right it, it, uh, you can. Uh, you can don't actually download the slides. But the, the thing here is. Uh, oh, I have the slides. Okay. Go to the. Uh, the intros. Here you can either give a name. Mm -hmm. Basically, this is just a name, okay, but it's or just don't give any name, and the calc will assign any name. So you can try without that. So I'm just struggling with the, with is this literally the syntax I want to use? Like, can I copy this? No, it's this part is uh, the syntax. Right, basically. but then the then the actual. The oh, you mean which one do you want to? No, it will take the first one. Always. Like it's this line right here. I think I know what I want to do, but I don't yeah. think this is syntactically valid. Yeah. Uh, here, this, what you want to write here is just a label. Okay. All right. Like so? Yeah. Okay. And I think it control down works. <laughs> Okay. So I now to introduce a proof for that, right? Yeah, exactly. You see, you move that from here to here, uh -huh. and then you can kind of do the same. Okay. Uh, <coughs> how do you yeah. apply? Am I using a uh, All these implications, and I want to like say, okay, a, a, b, and like chain those together. Actually, we're going to, we need to see later. You can apply just like a calling. It's, I think it's not a, well applied. Use directly, and then you can even use like a function h h one. Like you can say, oh, you can apply multiple like h zero to h one. But basically, what you want you want to prove how. Oh. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know how to make the implications happen. Okay, um, look at the, well, I think. Or we can cover it later. Yeah, yeah no, but yeah. Um, <coughs> yes. yeah. We are using uh, HJ, right, which is actually uh, built in in CVO Q. HA is uh, just a label. Okay, so label of uh, what actually this HA is? HA is just the name you want to give because if you see uh, here, it, up, uh, intro we move this to the hypothesis. Okay. And HA is just the label to want to give. Okay. You can replace HA with the name I want to give to okay. a, 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 a hypothesis. Okay, so we are not using a chain in our proof at all, right? So we can remove this token, will it work? Mm, no. Okay. Because you still have to move this one. Okay. How do I kind of reply the the proof? Can I just go like here? Yeah. And then start over? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. But yeah, HA is just a label. Okay. Uh, uh, you can basically try uh, like intro or an assumptions, or if you give a name, you. This is cool. I really like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, two things, uh, I forgot. Uh, in the GitHub repository, is the there are the slides you you can use the slides as a reference. And I from one and there is a small cheat sheet okay. with the list of uh, yes. With uh, the second beer, can you give us like a 
a, a normal sentence that would that would could be represented by this statement symbolically? Because I think we're kind of having trouble parsing like what A implies B implies A actually mean like if oh, is, like I I put on shoes today and B is I put on a hat today like you know what I mean right associates I mean A implies B implies yeah but it's kind of a I think the A implies the whole A implies B implies C in other words A and B implies C basically you are saying is uh, so the parentheses would go around the B implies A is that what you're saying I don't remember how it looks, but like it right associates to the parentheses going as right as possible. Right, okay, so it would be A implies B implies A. Okay, all right, that's, all right, that also makes more sense to me. I think that seems obviously true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe if. Does the B end up mattering? No. Yeah. Yeah, so B implies A could be rewritten as not B or A. No, that's constructive. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You can't do that? Uh, it's a lot of the middle. Yeah, exactly, because th I think that was use a uh, exclude middle. Yeah. And you don't have that. Wait, I'm Cock won't let you use that as a point. Well, I know cock won't, but I'm just, oh. for my own like, oh, understanding yeah. of like what the sentence is, what the, what the statement is, is saying, for like, my own purposes, I'm just trying to wrap my head around what, I, what it is that I'm trying to improve. So I have some sort of proof, so I have like a, an intuitive sense of what I'm doing, and I'm not just If you're going to buy bills today, then if Bob says hello to you, you're going to find out. Right, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. I think... Uh, I think it's very think about it. It makes sense to me if I look at A as a zero-R function. If I create an ace and A, of course I create an ace. Yeah. Um, it's not be on the floor and take A, you are in Yeah. There's a couple of things. I think there is... Uh, I haven't read it, but this, this book uh, about the, the combinator birds, and this one... I don't remember. Yeah, uh, and and k because if you I, I usually see it from programming language, but k is the constant. You give first the the constant you want to repeat, and then no matter what you give later, it will always replace with the same thing, the initial. Uh, there's a a file a file in the GitHub repository that is called cheat sheet that has a uh, the list of commands uh, and the uh, when kind of when to apply a rule. Um, if the goal start with for all, oh, we we're going to see it later, but ignore the for all and everything. Um, huh? Oh yeah, sorry. I can post it again if you want. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's thin, so if you go to the pins, it's uh, Otherwise, it's, uh, it's is in github.com, uh, uh, jclaramont, uh, yeah. It should be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, the the, the uh, my remembering of the sky sky i combinator is like i is the identity. If you see, this is the identity function. K is a constant. Basically, you give a first value, and then anything it takes later, it will return the first value. Will just ignore the second value. And this is uh, I totally forgot that, but uh, what it, what it mean? What it means? In, in we I can imagine that in constant A comes into scope and then when I get back a function for me to A and A to scope so I can just get to A given any meaning. Um, I'm wondering if there's a way to say that when you get to the B to A part that A is in scope, is there any logical? Is it in your gamma? Is it in your context? Yeah. yeah. As soon as you intro the A, it becomes part of that gamma thing in your context. Okay. Is that probably? Is that in your context? Yeah, basically that's how it works here. You put it in the context. Um, who, 
Okay, how we start with one? Let's do this together. Now we have nothing in the well A B C in the in the context and we have to prove A in place B in place A. Yeah. The, here we'll see the difference if, if I see is uh, if I do intro only, I introduce the first step of the implication and move the A to the hypothesis, but I still have to prove B implies A. Uh, what's next? Intro. Yeah, intro again. Here we have to if the cock uh, defines H, H0, H1, I can give uh, like a more meaningful names HA, HB, and it makes more sense. Hypothesis of A, hypothesis of B. And now we have A and B in the hypothesis. I want to prove A. Yeah, uh, some Tion. You said that you, you will see that there is more than one way to, to prove that. Well, in this case, once you get to the point that you have A in the hypothesis and you want to prove A, you don't care about the rest. Uh, Can you just. Yeah. Ah, uh, just because I put a name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can do. Come on. Yeah. Uh, no, no, this is uh, I, I give that name. Yeah. Yeah. Assumption, like, okay, look at all the hypotheses. To find out something. Yeah. But uh, if you are a lazy, if you are a lazy programmer, you can you can do all intros at the same time and tell Cog to look into the assumptions. So you can either do intro one at a time and give a meaningful name that is basically helps you understand what I'm doing or just introduce everything and then because I know that somewhere in the hypothesis is what I want to prove, the assumptions. Is there, is there a relationship between the, the name H-A and letter A? Is that, is that no, no. Is there a hypothesis of H-A? Just so you're right. I think but how that's do they know which, which one goes with which... Uh, oh, no, no, no. Rotation, I I guess. Guess. I can do it, yes. I think he's asking how does it know then? How does it know that the corresponds to the A in the theorem? Well, took the first one, to get the first thing you need. Yeah. yeah. What, where? Oh, uh, for the intro? Yeah. Oh. The intro takes the, you have an implication, and intro takes the first part of the implication and moves to the hypothesis. You can, even if, the, if you have a chain of implications, you can do intro, 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 or do intros. And it will do that for you and generates uh, H, H0, H1, H2, H3. Does it do all of them can do it in a row and then stop? Like for the next example, it won't go through all of them, right? Come again? Does it do all of the um, intros it can in a row and then stop? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no way to say, okay, do like five intros. Yeah. No. So whatever name I want. Like, 
what is the A? Is it is it it's a the hypothesis, right? Mm. Yeah, here at the top of the of the hypothesis, we we'll see A, B, and C are propositions because we are dealing with the logic side. And whatever name I want is just the name I'm going to do. Yeah. 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 Why do I have to say the second Because we, if, you, if you do the first intro, you are in this step. You have an A in the hypothesis, and your goal is B implies A. Sure but you don't have a proof of B implies A. But you intro again, and now you have your goal is A, and, your, uh, and you have A in your hypothesis, and then you can say, Good to go. I mean, it's kind of low level bidding one step at a time. When you do the intro, you, you move the variable to the hypothesis. Right? Yes. When you do that with the A and B, they like move to the upper part and they're like together there? When, mm, when you do the. Um, you mean the other? One second. You mean one of these cases? Um, kind of intro goes from the goals to the hypothesis, and the other is uh, application that you can you change your goals based on the hypothesis. And you mean this one? This side of the, yeah. yeah. So you, you kind of move the A to the hypothesis, mm -hmm. isn't it? So you move up. And then when you do that to B, the B moves up as well. Is that it? Uh, it moves one step at a time. You have like a chain of intros. You move first the first one, then the second one for each so intro. What happens with the first one? It's like there's two. No, no. If, you are do, if we have an implication, uh, means uh, you have you you will keep all in the hypothesis basically give because you're um, kind of unpacking the application say if you want to prove a implies b well also you can if i give you an a now you just have to prove b They're called tactics. I mean, it's, there are ways to move around your, your proof to, to get closer to your goal. Uh, yeah, here it doesn't allow me because I still have to introduce the second one. Uh, intro. Uh, two assumptions shown on the top, right? One is whatever name I want, the other one has mm -hmm. no name. The only one is type A. Yeah. yeah so in third, it just get, checks through all the materials. Yeah. Right, so it's like an uh, experiment. If you can throw the next term, you can throw the water. Yeah. Let's go to the last one. Is there a way to say explicitly, hey, I want to use exactly. the first one? Exactly. Exact yeah. Exact whatever name I want. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Because they are the, the, the SKA combinators. I is identity, doesn't do anything. K is the constant, and I think S is the composition. Are they kind of equivalent, if I recall correctly, in power to the lambda calculus? <coughs> so. Again, how do we start all the proofs? <laughs> yeah. You want to do... Let's, di let's try intros. What do you think this will do? 
how many how many hypotheses it will generate? Yeah. And it gave you whatever name that wants. Yeah. Okay. So now it's a little um, a little more complicated than than before. Now we have C. Uh, we have A, A in place B, A in place B, in place C in the hypothesis. Uh, we don't have direct proof of C, but it looks like if we apply uh, is if working with H0 into H and H1 into H0, uh, we can work out the results. So, um, yeah, the assumption doesn't do anything. Assumption, assumption. Yeah, no such assumption. So let's find out an example that looks a little more what, like what we want to prove. Because now we want to work, now the implications are in the hypothesis, not in the goal. So now we are talking about elimination. And it somehow looks like a, this kind of examples, no? We have, I want to prove C in this case, and we have A in place B in place C. Um, so let's try. We want to try to apply one of the hypotheses. Um, in this case, the only goal we have is C. Uh, so the other hypothesis won't match. If I try apply H0, It tell me it's unable to unify. I mean, it doesn't have H zero needs a B, and I have a C. Basically, the type is mismatch. Well, we can try apply H, um, because H has A in place B in place C. Uh, now, I'm in this case from one application of the hypothesis. Now I have to prove two different goals. Because if I'm saying that uh, to get a C, I need an A and a B, basically now Koch is asking me, okay, give me an A and give me a B. Uh, once you get to this step, um, Koch will start working on the first part. Here's how it, it'll, it will show you that you have two goals and it will immediately start with this goal. There's a command that you can use to switch goals. Um, uh, oh, I don't have it at hand. I forgot this. I think you have, uh, you select some goal, something. I think it's, but we can just go for the easy one. Now we are in the first goal. Uh, we want to prove A. We have this, and we want to prove A. If I play, can we? No, uh, apply H basically will uh, uh, split the, the goals. I mean, it will take the H the initial eight and it say okay you want to prove c and it will ask you for give you proof of a and b 